Experts are trying to figure out what's killing bees in Oregon by the thousands. Target shoppers in Wilsonville discovered 25,000 dead or dying bees this week scattered across the entire parking lot. Are you ready to get your parade on? Well, we are here at Action News. It's the Umatilla Landing Days. The event kicks off with the downtown parade at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. We begin this morning in the Lower Valley where deputies have a frightening mystery on their hands. A missing man, a burned car, and a skull in the trunk. The remains were found in the Sunnyside area while a tow truck was removing the car from private property. This is at Emerald and South Emerald Roads. Most of us can think of a million things we'd rather do than mow the lawn. Speaking for myself right now because Jay enjoys it very much. Yeah, I enjoy it, but uh, you couldn't do it if somebody paid you, Lindsay, huh? I don't, think, I don't think you could pay me enough money to do that. I don't even know where to start, so it would be a disaster waiting to happen. The only time I actually did attempt to mow a lawn, yeah. Jay, um, my dad had a tractor. What are those? four-wheeler lawnmowers. Sure. Yeah, I got on top of it and it wouldn't break, so uh, <laughs> I was traumatized after that. Yeah, how'd you get off it? I don't remember. It was so traumatizing. Did you jump off and just send it I into think, the hedge? I think I jumped off and rolled a bunch of times and uh, it was kind of like an army move like right there. Roll. A Yak man convicted of trying to sell drugs will spend 10 years in prison. Jose Naranjo Lozano was busted by undercover DEA agents last year for trying to sell them five pounds of methamphetamine. The 24-year-old pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute that drug. And in more local news now, the Hanford cleanup effort is once again getting the attention of the White House. U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz was in the Tri-Cities for his first tour of the site. His visit comes days after a Hanford watchdog said the feds aren't doing enough to inspect the waste at Hanford. Secretary Moniz promised a plan to get rid of waste safely. He's also confident new radioactive tanks will be built by 2019. Turning to Kennewick, where family and friends are mourning the loss of a young soldier who paid the ultimate price. Private First Class Robert Ellis was killed in Afghanistan just weeks before he was set to finish his tour overseas. In more local news, extra patrols will be on local streets looking for drunk drivers, city, county, and state patrols will all be making extra DUI crackdowns. The effort will begin this weekend and will continue throughout the 4th of July. We do have some good news for you this morning. Columbia Basin College is getting a lot of money to actually save some money. The school is getting more than one and a half million dollars from an energy grant. The goal is to create jobs and reduce energy costs. CBC will get energy saving equipment like new lights and water saving toilets. Statewide, the grant is expected to create more than a thousand jobs and will lower energy costs by almost $150,000. Coming up later on this morning, Jay is trying to beat the heat with a bandana that's supposed to keep you cool for two hours. Sounds too good to be true, but he'll show you if it will work or not, and he'll test it out on his dog, too, coming up on Action News, so that sounds exciting. And in the meantime, let's check in with him. He's at the Weather Center. Jay, Nestle loved that bandana. I'm not going to give it away, but but she really liked it. You know, she's a, she's a happy dog. A new manufacturing business is expected to bring 50 new jobs to the area. Paragon Films purchased a 125,000 square foot facility in Union Gap. The company has already hired about 25 people and officials expect to hire many more in the coming months. And staying on the job front in Pasco, where a new carrot processing plant will bring more employment opportunities as well. The project will be cut into three phases, the first being completed by October. 60 jobs will be created before the end of the year, and more than several hundred will be added once that project is complete in 2015. Grimway hired local construction companies as well to build the facility. Returning to Sunnyside this morning, where city leaders are asking you to help them pick a new city manager. Hollywood is mourning the loss of James Gandolfini. He's the the Emmy Award winning star of The Sopranos, plus an exclusive look at some upcoming movies, one starring a news anchor by the name of Ron Burgundy. Ring any bells? I'll have those stories and more in this morning's Eye Entertainment. James Gandolfini dies at age 51 while vacationing in Rome. According to HBO, the possible cause was a heart attack. Gandolfini cemented his place in Hollywood in the late 90s when he began playing the role of mobster Tony Soprano. He often said in interviews that he didn't think of himself as interesting, just a man doing what he called called a silly job. Gandolfini is survived by his teenage son, his wife, and a baby daughter they just had back in October. 
Brad Pitt tries to stop a zombie invasion dead in its tracks in the summer thriller World War Z. Pitt plays former UN investigator Jerry Lane, who gets enlisted to lead the fight against a zombie pandemic that is threatening the world. When a zombie bites a person, they instantly become one, sprinting and clawing their way to the next victim. Usually happens in all zombie movies, but those ones look especially fierce. Pitt co-produced the $200 million action thriller, and he's hoping to turn it into a franchise. World War Z opens in theaters tomorrow. And staying on the movie front this morning, going from zombies to the newsroom. At this hour in the morning, I often feel like a zombie myself, but the long-anticipated Anchorman 2 is coming out. Paramount is giving fans a first-hand look at the upcoming Anchorman sequel. Will Ferrell is back as Ron Burgundy, and this time his San Diego news team moves to the Big Apple to work at a 24-hour news channel. I'm going to do the thing that God put Ron Burgundy on this earth to do. Have salon quality hair and read the news. That's exactly what I live for every single morning. And I think the name of that news team is Action News as well. What a coincidence that is. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, hits theaters in December. That is your Iron Entertainment for this Thursday morning. I'm Lindsay Adams for Action News. Now let's send it back over to Jay. Covering the nation for you this morning, the overseas markets are down following a big sell-off on Wall Street. News that Chinese manufacturing has slowed helped to trigger the slide. Analysts say investors are still reacting negatively to the announcement from the Federal Reserve that it may end its massive bond buying program at the end of the year. The Dow Jones lost 353 points. That's the biggest decline since since November 2011. Despite the negative news, analysts believe the economy as a whole is still on the rise. Meanwhile, Republicans and Democrats have reached an agreement to strengthen border security, which almost assures the immigration reform bill will pass in the Senate. The deal would almost double the size of the Border Patrol, as well as build 350 miles of new fencing and provide more drones for aerial surveillance. A vote on the legislation is expected to come within the next week. It will then head to the House, where passage is far from certain. And the partying is probably still going on in Miami as we speak. The Miami Heat are back-to-back -back world champions. The Heat beat the San Antonio Spurs 95 to 88 to win game seven of the NBA Finals. LeBron James was named the MVP for helping lead his team to the victory. It is the second year in a row he's won the award. James scored 37 points and added 12 rebounds. Dwayne Wade added 23 points of his own. This is the third NBA title in Miami Heat history. And those are some of the nation's top stories this Friday morning. I'm Lindsay Adams, Fraction News. Now let's send it back over to Jay. Deputies still can't explain how the Idaho woman ended up in a wheat field just a short distance from that store. Klontz had been on her way home to North Idaho from Hermiston on Sunday. She was last seen on Sunday afternoon before she was reported missing. We spoke to a Franklin County deputy who worked through the night to find her. Deputies say a number of citizens showed up to help search for Rochelle while a local farmer paid for hotel rooms for her family and the country mercantile provided dinner. Our website. Jay, I remember when I first moved here, you helped me with about 20 boxes. I that did, I remember that. Yeah, so you are a great mover yourself. Are your services available? <laughs> Not for hire. Not for hire. 